Hey guys, Stoltec Moto here doing an installation video today on the 2017 Yamaha FZ10. Same thing as the later MT10s. We're we'll putting a set of Spiegler stainless steel brake lines on here. We developed this kit a few years ago, had some questions over the years, and figured it was time to do an installation. As you get this kit, you're going to see there's a lot of lines in here. A lot of pieces. Read everything, please. There's a lot of information here. Great kit. We really love this stuff. Um, made in the States, which is great. DOT approved, which you won't find in many other kits in the market. Really great quality. They're easy to work with. A lot of adjustability, and we'll go over all that stuff as we go. But I wanted to take some time and show you guys what you're going to be working with. Obviously, this bike has had all the body work taken off. You're going to need to get it down to this state. Fuel tank, scoops, air box, it all needs to come off this as well. You're also going to see that we have some other stuff off the bike. A tail section and some pieces of the headlight area up here. That does not, we're just doing some other work. I figured it would be a good time to show you guys what's going on. We're going to keep the original master cylinder on this particular project here today. We'll follow up with another one at some point with the R1. But for today, for today we're going to leave that on. I want to show you guys a couple things. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time taking off the bodywork, and you're going to spend a little bit of time working around the radiator here. you got two options. It depends what you're looking to do. You could remove the hoses and drop the radiator off the bike. Just be aware, obviously, that you're going to need coolant, and it's going to take a little bit extra time. And you're going to need some special some special tools to take these off and put them back on or change the fitting type. We typically just lower this down. Once you drop it a little bit, you're going to gain extra clearance. It's hard to see, I'm sorry, but uh, you're going to gain some more clearance between the frame spar and the radiator. This bike's a little bit older. Um, it's been ridden and the bugs and rocks and some washing has tended to deform some of those fins but if your bike is newer and you're more particular i would definitely say that whatever you do be careful those fins are definitely thin and soft uh you know like a piece of wood or cardboard over the front of it to protect it is going to be good i would say it's easier with like you know something flexible like a piece of plastic or cardboard but it's your call anything that you can do to protect that you will see marks you're going to spend quite a bit of time taking off the scoops on the body work here Each side is going to be four screws, and they're buried behind all these cables and harnesses. There's two of the bosses right there. You've got four of those. They both have to come off. Once you get those off, the next piece is going to be taken off the shrouds for the tank. Okay, so there's those four screws that I mentioned to you for the scoop. You can have two pop rivets here. So even once you take off all the other fasteners, you're going to be left with something that's holding it on. Those are the two pieces that are going to hold it on. Okay? So kind of up in that top corner. Just pull those straight out. Don't pry. Just pull it straight out. Nice and firm. Don't bend the plastic too much. You don't want to break these pieces. That's the case on both sides. With the body work off, honestly, that's about an hour, hour and a half of your work. That's a lot of time. Air box will come right off just like any other standard air box. There's the hard lines coming in here on top. I'm going to pardon my shadow. Those are the ones that we're going to be taking off. This line does replace all the hard lines. This kit does replace all the hard lines, excuse me. So these ones here are all going to come off. Snakes under the frame. Works its way over here into a manifold. Converts back to rubber lines and goes to the ABS unit. Same thing with the rear lines. They start with the hard line up here. They snake down around the pump and they come out here through the undertail into a manifold. Converts into soft rubber lines again. Runs to the master cylinder and to the rear caliper. We're going to take all those hard lines off. We reduce Run around, geez, I forget at this point, about two, two and a half pounds worth of weight, which is pretty cool. Uh, but also, it takes away a lot of these potential leak points, because once you get this fuel tank off and your airbox, you're not going to want to do this again. So again, all the hard lines are coming off. These are all going to come off as well, obviously. And there's what you're working with. I would plan... Total time, if you're taking your time, somewhere in the four to six hour range. More if you're taking breaks. 
but that'll give you an estimate for how long you're looking at. Not the most complex set of lines on the market, but definitely not as easy as a non-ABS bike that doesn't have all the bodywork and the complexity of the MT-10. All right, first thing first, you see here there's a pneumatic brake blader. You don't need to use one of these, but a Mighty Vac works as well. You could do a hand pump, uh, but the most important thing is that you get all the fluid out of the system, front and rear. There's long lines on this bike because of the ABS, so be aware that there's going to be quite a bit in there. Word of advice, these screws up here are not Phillips. They look like they are, but they're JIS. If your screwdriver doesn't stand up like that, look for a better screwdriver. You will round out these screws if you're not careful. As you'll see, the right screwdriver, the right tool for the job makes this much easier. We're gonna to need to run this guy dry, and you can see by the color of this brake fluid, it was in need of replacement anyway. Down here at the bleeder, it's an eight millimeter wrench. You wanna crack this loose. You're gonna to wanna to repeat that same procedure on the other two calipers. Although you took a lot of the fluid out getting to the junction, there's gonna be some more fluid left in this line and this caliper. Same thing with the rear, right? So you're gonna to wanna to do each one to make sure that there's no extra drips in there. Uh, I do recommend wearing gloves. This stuff isn't good on your hands. And like I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that there's no drips. But if you do a good job at this point, you're going to minimize any damage or potential for damage down the road. And we're going to do the final bleed on the rear caliper here. Same setup as the front. There's another good shot of what your fluid should not look like. Make sure you change this stuff every two years, preferably every year. Here we are, the system is drained. You can see there's still just a bit of residual fluid in there. Front has a bit more. You're gonna to wanna to clean this up really good with a nice clean dry rag. Again, wear gloves before you touch this stuff. It's not good for your skin. Make sure you get all the mating surfaces clean as well. You can still see here that there's some dirt and some bugs. You wanna get this stuff nice and clean. You don't want any contamination in there. You can see there's some really tiny holes and dirt will cause problems. Even if it gets through those holes, it'll start leaks at the calipers and your master cylinder, and uh, we'd like to avoid that. So at this point, once the system is dry, you're just gonna start taking stuff off one piece at a time. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Just get all the lines off the bike. And we'll start putting new stuff on. Although we normally just put some cardboard over the radiator, we figured we would actually have it taken down this time just to show you guys what kind of access you would have. So if it's something where maybe if your mileage is coming up and you're doing an antifreeze flush or if you're going to do something like your valve adjustment, if you already have it down anyway, it makes it a whole lot easier. And as you see here, trying to get access to those fittings up top is much, much, much easier with the radiator out of the way. You can see that little holder up here that has to come down. All the lines go over it and there's some harnesses. But these two blocks right here with these two fittings, they have to come off. So with the radiator out of the way, there's an awful lot more room. It's definitely possible with it on, but so much better with it off. So here's what you're kind of left with. It's your choice. A little bit more work, but it's an awful lot easier to get this other work done. So um, you be the judge. All right, here we go. We got the front two lines installed. They're routed pretty roughly, but they're starting here at the ABS pump. I recommend that you start here. Uh, it's easiest to work the slack out. You wanna leave these loose for right now because there's gonna be some room for adjustment. Keep in mind that when you install these bolts here, these are fine pitch thread. Those are an M10 by one. Everything else on the bike at the master cylinders and the brake calipers are M10 by 1.25. Don't mix those up. You're gonna have an expensive problem if you do. So keep those loose for right now. And I wanna show you this bracket right here. You wanna get these two rubber grommets pretty close to the factory bracket. You'll note that we took it off. We installed one of the bolts that Spiegler sends with the kit. You have to take the bracket off to get it started. 
And then you want to line up these rubber grommets here closely. Now we're going to use some P-clamps and some spacers to get it installed, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. All right, so there's the bracket installed. As you can see, these two lines are going to be routed nice and snug to the subframe. You want to give yourself enough room for the fuel tank when it's installed, the fuel pump, and all the fittings. Here's the bracket. You'll see that there's a P-clamp around each of those two rubber grommets. That bolt in there is loose. That one aluminum spacer in between to give them some standoff. That's where you want to leave it. So once you got the routing pretty close, now you're free to take off this bracket here and tighten up that bolt that came with the kit and the supplied nut. All right, here we go with the final install configuration on these line segments. You'll notice that these two are still kind of loose. They could flex. This is locked in place. You could always take it off and make an adjustment later if you need to, but we're going to leave these loose until you know that you're good. But you'll notice here the final configuration of the hardware. There's this supplied screw from Spiegler, one P-clamp around the grommet, aluminum spacer, another P-clamp with the grommet, and the nut. That's all locked in place on the original bracket. That's not going anywhere. Now you're going to route the lines forward around the throttle body, up over the radiator, and up to the other stuff on the front. So at this point, you got the front line coming up to the front master cylinder. You want to leave enough slack up here, follow this line over, nice little bend. There's a reason we want some extra slack up here. You're going to route it down through this hoop right here, factory grommet and clip right here, factory clip mount right here, new P-clamp from that bracket right there. All this line up from here is going to be fixed in place. It's not going to move. So you want to have enough room up there, have that adjusted. That you can get all tight at this point. You'll be good to go. The manifold, that black block right there is going to mount onto the bottom side of the factory bracket with a supplied screw and nut on the other side. That bracket can be bent a little bit in any direction. It's pretty light duty. So play with it if you need to. You're going to install the two lines going down to the calipers now finger tight. Finger tight there, finger tight there. You want to get it close, but don't tighten them down yet. Partially because this line here, we want to loop underneath. And our next job is going to be to route those up in this factory bracket right here. So you're going to use those two indentations to route these lines through. And don't forget, you got a harness here for the ABS, which I'll show you. That's going to route up and over here. So that's the play-by-play. -play. These are loose. Everything is hand tight only. Get it close. And then the next step, we're going to tighten everything up and get it to a point where everything looks pretty good. All right, here's a roughly assembled view of how things are going to look once everything is together. Here's a line coming from the caliper, line from the other caliper, loosely assembled right now, don't tighten those down. Here's the other line coming up over the bracket. It's going to get sandwiched in between the frame and the bracket. And then here's the other line that's going to snake underneath this line here. So there's extra slack here right now just to make a point of how it's going to look. We'll tighten that down next. The ABS lead is going to get sandwiched up here as well. So this just kind of shows how everything's going to be. This takes a little bit of work. It's easier said than done, so take your time. Uh, but everything does go back up against the frame just like that. Here's the manifold assembly installed loosely to the bracket. You can show a little bit of slack here with the line. Just enough so you get clearance for this line to torque that fitting. There's this rubber sheath here. You want this to protect the line as it goes through the bracket and wraps around the frame. So any contact point, you want this hose, this rubber sheath, to be protecting it. Now these screws aren't really tight at this point, but you can kind of see, pardon the light, the orientation of those brackets. And we'll tighten that down. Here's a view from the other side showing the manifold. Everything here has been torqued down. 
nice and solid. You got one on each side and one on top. A little hard to see here behind the wire, but it's right up in here. Going to use an 11 millimeter wrench. And like I said earlier, don't over torque these things. You just want a nice good seat, but obviously you don't want to leak. So make sure that you take care to make sure that it's tight. You tighten those things down. And again, there's the orientation of everything going over that bracket. Put the clips back in place for the ABS line. These grommets should be pretty close. Fit them just like you normally would. Now we're going to go back underneath the tank, finish the routing of these lines, and move on to the rear. And here's the final routing coming up over that bracket where the radiator is going to go. It's going to route underneath the frame over here into, it's kind of hard to see, there we go, into the factory clip that's secured to the frame, to the mount we showed you a bit earlier, right to the ABS pump. So there it is, the routing for the front. And one of the first things we're going to do on the rear line is we're going to modify the bracket that holds the junction block and routes the X-up cables. This little piece here is going to need to be trimmed off with the Dremel or some other suitable tool. I like the Dremel for this because it's smaller and the bracket's small. Just make sure to clean it up and deburr it. Uh, I would try to paint this so that it doesn't rust. This is what it's, it's going to look like. Uh, once you make the adjustments to it. Here's the final configuration of the lines in that mount. You're going to see two P-clamps around the grommet, two grommets, the supplied bolt and aluminum spacer. Same configuration that we use up underneath the fuel tank, we're going to use here as well. You're going to want to route the rear caliper line into the subframe first, then the line to the master cylinder. Get those aligned like such, loosely of course. Put the factory wire tie back on. I usually flip it the other way, but I showed it this way just to make a point on camera. You can install it however you want to make it clean. Just ensure that there's good clearance around the swing arm. Nothing's going to be contacting. Nothing's going to get pinched. Then we're going to start the process of torquing things down. I recommend that you torque this one down you can kind of get your tool in between this line if you take this out of the way. As you torque this down, just give us a little push in against the stop so it gives clearance over here to the frame. And everything will be perfect as far as this is concerned. So once you torque this one down, move back here, torque that. Come on up there, torque those, and then work your way to the front. Check on the front to ensure that there is no binding up with this fitting arrangement once the radiator is installed obviously but just you know check to make sure that there's no binding when you go from lock to lock on your steering as long as you're good now you're gonna be good later but you want to check to make sure before you add all the fluid now at this point that's all the lines and as I mentioned we're gonna torque them down we're gonna add the fluid and bleed the system one word of advice when you're torquing down these banjos these are the the aluminum Spiegler banjo bolts. These are not required for installation. You could reuse your OEM, but you want to ensure that you're using a supplied aluminum crush washer. This banjo obviously here is aluminum as opposed to the steel. You do not want to torque these more than required. Okay, so for this specification, we'll be looking at 18 to 21 newton meters or 13 to 16 pound feet. Use a torque wrench, do not go any higher but you do want to ensure that you're using these particular parts. And as I mentioned, the bolts are optional, but use the aluminum crush washers and use those torque settings, anything higher, and you will cause issues. All right, so once you've torqued down everything properly with a torque wrench, you're gonna to start to fill the system. Ensure that you've cleaned out all the reservoirs to make sure that there's no debris in there. Use a good high quality fluid, <clears throat> excuse me. We recommend the RBF 600 by Motul. It is probably the highest wet and dry boiling point that you can purchase without really breaking the bank. You're going to need two of these, 500 milliliters a piece, so one liter in total. 
You're going to need a bit less than two, but it's a bit more than one. And if you have any trouble getting the air out, you're going to wish you had extra. So make sure that you have enough on hand. This is good stuff. We recommend it. And now we start filling. There's a speed bleeder installed, just like any other standard bleeder. You want to use an 8mm wrench and just seat it slightly. You don't have to torque on this thing. It just needs to be tight. Don't overdo it. You're going to make problems for yourself. One point to mention on the front. When Yamaha moved to ABS on these bikes, uh, the FZ10, the MT10 always had ABS. Uh, the FZ9 moved to ABS in 2017, uh, 2016 with the XSR900. They changed the bleeders. So what you'll see here is the arrangement that you have. The center two are the originals, the gold ones are the speed bladers. You're going to notice that they're different lengths. The short one is going to go on the left-hand side when you're seated on the bike. The longer one with the O-ring came off the right-hand side, so the longer gold one's going to go over there. You don't need that O-ring. That's in there for the purposes of leaks from Yamaha. It's not required. We've been using these for years as such. No leaks have ever been found. But these are what you're going to want. So when you order these, you want the SB. 8125L, that's the short one. You want one for the left, one for the rear, and you want the SB8125LL, the extra long, for the right hand side here. All right, we just wrapped up with the bleed front and rear. We built pressure, everything's tight, there's no leaks. We've checked all the banjo bolts and fittings. All the bleeders, we're ensuring that everything is tight, everything is routed properly. There's no interference issues at full steering lock. You want to make sure that there's no leaks. This is obviously a safety critical system. You don't want to play with your life with your brakes, so ensure that everything is done perfectly. Up here, you want to check for any leaks and drips coming from that manifold block. Provided you're good. You're ready to get the bike back together and enjoy a much better brake feel. Next video, we're going to talk about how to install a radio master cylinder. Some of the quirks that are going to come with getting that and modifying the brake switch for the cruise control. So until then, enjoy the new brake lines and ride safe.